Hey guys, KT here. Welcome back to some more Mass Effect. Last time we actually found out we are the captain of the Normandy because uh, Commander a Anderson actually stepped down as captain. And now we're actually going to talk to uh, more of the crew like I said I was going to do. So there might not be much action. So let's talk to good old Garrus. Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. I knew working with the Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. Have you worked with a Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. At CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC's handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not fast. Got it? I wasn't trying to. I understand, Commander. <laughs> wow, that... We're, we're kind of mean to Garrus. I'm sorry, Garrus. I mean, I know we're being a little harsh, but you have to understand. Oh, <laughs> I felt like we were a little too har harsh on Garrus. Are you kidding me? Commander? How are you What's doing? Your opinion on the last mission? Kind of wish you'd got there sooner, Commander. No offense. I appreciate the rescue. I just wish... You wish we'd been able to save the rest of your unit? Yes, sir. If I had been more alert, we wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. The Geth are perfect ambushers. They don't move, they don't make noise, they don't even breathe. Sir, they have flashlight heads. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm pretty sure they can turn off the flashlight on their head. So let's talk. Do you have a few minutes to talk one-on-one? -on -one? I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duty squared away. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. Dismiss, okay. Chief. I don't even know what that decision has, but I mean, I might as well just ask, you know? So let's examine the weapons, get some experience. Let's talk to good old Rex, because, you know, we just met him a couple videos ago. Nice ship you got, Shepard. What can I do for you? What's your story, Rex? There's no story. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. You Krogan lived for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. I was just making conversation. I wasn't trying to upset you. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Really? Let's talk about this. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. 
and most of us never go back. Okay, let's let's talk about the genophage. I want to know about that. What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected, every one, and no one's rushing to find a cure. Whoa. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? You ask a Krogan. Would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. Okay. So long, Rex. Shepard. Jeez. So Rex's people are all about f war and fighting. That's actually kind of gr good information to know about, you know? Plus, then again, we fought a Kro Krogan when we were at the at uh, when we were going after Fisk, and they were pretty strong. So I can understand that. Um, so let's uh, talk to Engineer Adams. Commander, you know that quarry in Tally? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board, and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You've got an eye for talent, Commander. But I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Um, I don't think I really need to ask about that, Carry so... Aye, aye, Commander. Plus, I'm trying to talk to my crew that, uh... That comes down on the ground with me, so let's talk to Tally. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive cord like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. The Normandy's a prototype. Cutting-edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. Yeah, you are. I want to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Okay, good to know. I didn't understand a single bit, but I mean, no, no, I'm, I'm joking. I did listen I do Tell understand it a little bit. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million Quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. 
In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. That's oh. Our government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters okay. that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials. In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. Huh. She really likes to talk, though. I'm not gonna lie. So let's talk, uh... Do I want to continue conversations? You know what? We have time. Let's, let's do it. I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Okay. Interesting. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. How come the Council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. So, the Geth share brain power? Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in the group, the smarter they are. So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But okay. when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. Uh, so why did they turn on you, though? What made them rebel? As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. Uh, what, what happened next? It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. You can't blame them for fighting for their survival. We had no other choice. The Geth were already on the verge of revolution. By acting quickly, we had a chance to end the war before it began. The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody, 
Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Vale. Now, we drift through space, exile, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. Huh. Okay, let's just say goodbye. So... See you later. I've, I'm kind of siding with the Geth on that one, because they attacked first, I'm not going to lie. Like, they were just asking questions, curio curious of... Uh, of their own purpose in the world uh, that they live in. So I kind of am siding with the Geth because they were attacked. It was a self-defense kind of deal. Like, I mean, you give them AI intelligence, you have to expect that they're going to start wanting, wondering and ask questions. I mean, come on. Even I, I can uh, side with the Geth here that they were just... Uh, gaining an intelligence and they were curious and since they were attacked of course they were provoked and they decided to uh to defend themselves i mean come on i mean you could have like tried to make like a piece make it where they're both where both sides are fine with this and understand each other and become peaceful and kind of work together there but instead you feared revolution and it caused uh, it caused a war leading you away from your planet. Uh, like, I mean, come on. It's not hard, <laughs> that hard to, like, t talk it out and try to make peace. I mean, well, yeah, it is hard sometimes, but, I mean, they were just asking questions. I mean, it's not that big. It's not like they were trying to rebel and change your laws and all that. They were just curious about their own meaning. Okay, but... I guess I'm going to end it here, you guys. If you guys enjoy, make sure to leave a like and a subscribe. But in the next part, we're actually going to go on to the next mission and get some action going. So, yeah, if you guys enjoy, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. It really helps me out, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!